It is Sunday, November 28th, 2021. I'm Chris Remo, and welcome back to my New York Times Crossword Daily Solve. Now, I apologize if you experienced some of those audio irregularities in yesterday's video. I've been dealing with this for a week now, and I've just completely uh, revamped my entire recording setup on the software side because I'm pretty sure it's a software issue. And I'm hoping this recording is pretty clean. Uh, let me know if you feel otherwise and uh, point me to the timestamp indicating as such, unless you've already heard from me again at the beginning of the video telling you not to do so. And I hope that's not the case. Anyway, this is a Sunday crossword, the Sunday crossword, the New York Times Sunday crossword puzzle. So it is a big grid. We can see what a large grid this is compared to an ordinary crossword, and it's themed. And the theme is something around garage sale pitches. So I'm, I think that'll probably be probably be a bit of wordplay going on there. Don't know yet. First, I will briefly mention the new Twitter account at the Daily Solve, which you can follow for daily posts about this series, as well as the Patreon campaign at patreon.com slash daily solve. And there you can get a wealth of bonus video solves going back for several months since the Patreon campaign has been running, as well as um, access to an additional channel on the Daily Solve Discord chat server. And that is something that, whether you are a patron or not, you can join for free to access most of it and chat with others in the um, Daily Solve community, I suppose, chatting about crosswords, other puzzles, crosswords construction, and the like. And there's link to all, links to all these things, of course, in the description field underneath the video. So let's move on to discussing a couple of clues from yesterday's puzzle. We have um, yesterday's puzzle, the Saturday crossword, and the effing crow says, since you mentioned you were unsure where it came in, toe tap, T-O-E-T-A-P, factors into football because of rules regarding what it means to catch a pass in bounds. A football player attempting to catch a pass near the sidelines may often try to tap their toes in bounds in order to establish themselves as catching the ball in the field of play before being carried out of bounds by their momentum. Interesting. That makes sense. And Laura Sexton corrects my pronunciation of, I think, what I said, Ute, U-T-E, the tribe, and she says it's pronounced Ute. Think of Utah. There we go. Very fitting, of course. Uh, namesake. And Kathy Swope explains that Xeriscaping, X-E-R-I, scaping, is designing a garden that needs minimal irrigation. It has become very popular in water-scarce parts of the American Southwest, especially using native desert plants, but it can be done anywhere. And she also points out that, as I suspected, castor oil is indeed Popeye-related. He is olive oil's brother. And uh, finally, <laughs> Chris Lavornia explains that if you read the constructor notes in the wordplay column on the New York Times puzzle blog, Charlson, constructor yesterday, indeed said he had a desire to add in an XYZ mini theme to the puzzle. So that explains that little diagonal run of XYZ that I thought must be intentional. There's no way that could have happened by chance, and it turned out it didn't. So, all of that said, shall we solve a Sunday puzzle? We should get going, because this is a big grid. Could take a while. And I have to, I have to um, be done in time to head out to the opera to see, as I mentioned yesterday, seeing uh, the Valkyrie by uh, Wagner, and that is something like a five-hour experience, I think, <laughs> including two intervals. So um, let's get going. Let's get started. Okay, evidence of disorderly conduct. Evidence of disorderly conduct. And there's a question mark. So some sort of pun or wordplay is happening. I don't know. I mean, it could could it be referring to something as straightforward as trash or rubbish? I'm not sure. Andrew, who became the acting FBI director after James Comey was fired. Boy, you'd think I'd remember this. It was in this would have been recently. All right. It gets the lead out. And a good dessert to split. Banana? A banana split? 
I'm not quite sure because banana itself isn't, you wouldn't really describe it as a dessert. So maybe not. Having made one's, having made up one's mind about. Here we have outback site. Could be an emu, maybe, or a roo, a kangaroo. Outback being a uh, colloquial term for Australia that could match with roo being colloquial for kangaroo, perhaps. Yeah, I don't know. Animated greetings. Well, it probably ends with an S. Does that help at all? Disperse could be split up or spread or something like that. Yeah. Eleven is threads. Could be for clothes, could be togs or duds, perhaps. Maybe duds more likely. Uh, heaven forbid. Heaven forbid. I mean, I hope not, that sort of thing. Blood typing letters would be ABO, the ABO blood testing system. And 11 across threads, rags perhaps? Word that can come before or after home. What do we have here? Instrument with a solo in Seal's Kiss from a Rose. An oboe, possibly. That sounds plausible for that song. And heaven forbid, let's start with no, possibly. And then here we have Lloyd Blank, Dukakis's Veep pick in 1988. Lloyd Benson, who's probably best known at this point for his rejoinder to, was it Dan Quayle? About, about John F. Kennedy, Benson, some, Quayle had said something, I think, comparing himself to Kennedy. And Benson said, I knew John Kennedy. John Kennedy was a friend of mine, and you, sir, know John Kennedy. Something to that effect. Or Jack Kennedy, he might have said. All right. Some words of Wordsworth. Well, I suspect this is the favored poetic form of the crossword, the ode. So some words of Wordsworth might be odes, but let's let's check the crosses and see if we can confirm or deny that. Trickle could be seep, as in a liquid trickling or seeping. Um, entirely plausible. There's no place like blank, Alaskan's quip. So there's no place like blank. The quip there would be home. But I believe there is a community in Alaska called Gnome. So I bet, I've never heard this before, but I bet that's what it is. And an, an amenity in GM vehicles, this actually came up uh, maybe a month or so ago in the crossword OnStar, which I think is some sort of GPS routing system, something to that effect. Oh, here's one of our theme clues I just noticed. Prop axe used in The Shining, a valuable collector's item, $200. And these are, I see, these are garage sale pitches. It's probably safe to say you could get more than $200 for the prop axe used in The Shining, but uh, makes me wonder if $200 is chosen specifically because of its meaning in this answer. I don't think I have enough to go on yet, so I'm going to keep looking around. A bit, could be some, a bit of something. I'm not... Well, and that would allow trickle to be seep. And then here we have actress and gender equality activist Watson. Must be Emma Watson. And then prop acts used in The Shining. So starting with D-O-O -O makes me wonder if it's door, because that axe was used to break down a door in the film The Shining. So does that help here? Sandal variety. If that were an R, trap. I don't think I know this <laughs> sandal variety, whatever that is. Tried one's hand could be could end with stab. Took a stab for since for instance. Tried one's hand at something. Took a stab at that thing. And horror director Aster, I believe Ari Aster, I believe he directed Hereditary, which I thought was I thought was a, an extremely harrowing but excellent film. Um, here we have actress Madeline of Blazing Saddles. That would be the comedian Madeline Kahn. And what may cover some ground could be an area rug, perhaps. Covers just some of the floor, not all of it. A false front. I'm not sure offhand, but I kind of want to look back at this prop axe thing. Do, could be do or door. Door bust. Yeah, door busting. Oh, door busting. 
doesn't that have some mean meaning when it comes to sales or something like that? Door, door busters. Oops, I misspelled that. That's I think that's that's used to describe a sale that's so enticing and potent that you would bust down the door to take advantage of it. Door busting. What is that? Interesting. And then casual greeting could be sup, contraction of what's up, and a concern for veterans for short could be PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder. And to wipe out in, I don't know, skiing or surfing or something could be eat it. Oh, and a false front could be a guise. A guise. A uh, a ruse or a, a disguise, I suppose, or some kind of pretension. All right. What the universe may or may not be. (laughs) Um, interesting. Endless. Maybe this isn't, maybe this isn't door busting. Maybe it's door buster because I sort of want the universe to be or not be endless or could be, I don't know, aimless or pointless or something. I wonder if there's something else that it could be less, but I suspect it is, it is, or isn't something less. And a person from Calgary or Edmonton in Canada would be an Albertan from the province of Alberta. And then raised bread. If you are if you are raised, you are bred by somebody. Or you could raise or breed, breed animals. And then so here we have, okay, we do have doorbuster. That does work. But I don't, doorbuster tool? I'm not, yeah, I don't know. Set up. Well, it could end with D for set up in the past, and then we would have endless here. Let's see if we can fix endless. A stretch of time could be an eon for a long one or an era. Era probably slightly more likely. And special interest, e.g., could be a niche. Special interest, an unusual area for one to um, have. All right. She can act as a DJ nowadays. Um, I suspect this is Siri, the Apple sort of virtual assistant. I've never used Siri, but I wouldn't in any way be surprised if for some reason she could act as a DJ. I wonder if that just means she can play music if you ask her to. That seems plausible. TV's cousin blank. This is... I actually don't remember if this is the Munsters or the Adam fa- Adams family, strangely. I can't believe I don't remember that. But in any case, Cousin It. Cousin It, I think. I-T-T. And an award achievement for Audrey Hepburn and Andrew Lloyd, Andrew Lloyd Webber. I, my guess would be this is an EGOT, an Emmy, Grammy, Oscar, and Tony, a, a prestigious run of four of the major performance awards. And composers, I think, often get the composers probably get these disproportionately compared to many other um, uh, many other types of performer or artist because they can work across so many fields similarly, and they often tend to have a massive number of credits. So the the sort of the the pool for their individual set of works is is bigger. All right, to target with a pass could be to toss to. You could target somebody with a pass by tossing the ball to them. A stretch of time. Look at that. Wow, this was Eon. And then here we had a stretch of time as an era. So I said era was more likely than Eon, and it turns out I was completely incorrect. They're equally likely, in fact, in this puzzle, because they both occur, and I just happened to get lucky by putting it in here. And that's why you always check the crosses. Let's check the crosses as the mug that you can get if you back at a certain level in my Patreon campaign, states and reminds us, I could stand with that reminder. So I'm looking forward to getting my own mug in the mail in probably a week or two, I would think. All right. Sure is, could be yes, but I think more likely to be yep, because sure is, it's sort of, there's a bit of an informality connoted, I think, in that phrase, which would be matched with yep rather than yes. But let's check the cross to see. Much of Italy's north. Yeah, that could be the Alps, the mountain, the, the mountains. And so that would fit with the Alps. And let's see if we can confirm that. Removes as a tattoo. I suspect that's lasers, uses a laser to remove the tattoo. And then here we, we're sort of following a little, little stair step down as we wend our way 
uh, diagonally through this puzzle. Blank Colada, Pina Colada, the, the Pina Colada, the cocktail, and start it again as 99 bottles of beer. Resang? I don't really know why you would need to say that. We re-sang it. We started again. It's sort of odd, slightly awkward. I wonder if that's correct. Here we've got another theme clue. Guitar, never used, $15. I wonder if there's any... Is it a complete coincidence that a guitar can be referred to as an axe and this other clue refers to an axe? I sort of suspect it's probably a coincidence because axe is actually in the clue here, whereas over here, um, it's not. So you could write axe into this answer because it's because it's not used in the clue, but you certainly could not put axe into the shining axe answer because axe has already been used in the clue and you're never going to put, you're never going to use a word from the clue in the answer. That's just a convention of the crossword. So what does that mean? Don't really know. Guitar, never used, $15. I mean, the end of this could be attacker. That doesn't seem very likely. Um, attaches could be. Doesn't really seem very likely either. There's probably some much, some, some much more obvious words that I'm missing, but let's keep looking around. One's coming on board. One's coming on board. It probably ends with an S. A kind of blue akin to cerulean. It could be sea blue. How about that? And a razor of team spirit. Um, a mascot or what? I don't know. A running figure. Running figure. Just I'm probably missing some obvious things today. When you're about as smart as a fifth grader. When. When you're about as smart as a fifth grader. Could be age something. I mean, that would probably be when you yourself are in fifth grade, I would think. What would that be? That would be about age 10 or 11, maybe. Would age 10 work? I mean, that's kind of an, a sort of an elliptical clue in a way. <laughs> it uh, sort of refers back to itself in the sense that, well, it describes a situation that refers back to itself. If you are as smart as a fifth grader because you are, a, in fact, a fifth grader, there's sort of a tautological element to that. So, and I think this might be right because voila could be ta-da. You'd say voila, ta-da, I did it. Here it is. And hooked could be attached maybe, although I don't know if I'm confident enough without any crosses to put that in. So let's not. Your regular intake could be your diet. And banh mi topping. So banh mi, a Vietnamese sandwich served on a uh, sort of a baguette, not a baguette, but a, a kind of long roll. Um, what would you put as toppings? A pâté. Often, often banh mi is made with a pâté. I wonder if that fits. Razor of a team spirit. Razor of team spirit. Why am I not seeing that? Let's keep looking. Let's check pâtés. Ain't that the truth? Could be indeed. You might say that to mean ain't that the truth. And the hooked. Yeah, it wasn't attached, I don't think. Or at least it wasn't if this was indeed. And a Washington neighbor could be Idaho. So Washington, the state of Washington in the United States. Pretty sure neighbors the state of Idaho. So that could be the case. And then here's another theme clue. Textbook, a few pages torn out. Two dollars. I wonder if this is addition. Addition of a textbook here at the end. And then hooked could be seeing what that is. Hooked. It could be hooked as in grabbed or hooked as in sort of, well, it could be grabbed physically or grabbed metaphorically for that matter. Um, anyway, I'm going to keep looking around for now. Here we have aware of. Aware of could end in two. If you could, you're aware of something, you're sort of onto it or... Let's see. Let's see if we can check that T into running figure, running figure. A tally. I wonder if, oh, yes. We don't have, this isn't sea blue, but rather sky blue. That threw me off, didn't it? And then that would allow a running figure to be tally. In other words, in this case, a running count. A figure meaning a number, a running number, a running count, a tally. And a 90 degree bend could be an L. 
because L bends 90 degrees. And, and often you would call that sort of bend in a pipe or something in L. Uh, here we have Razor of Team Spirit. Oh, a pep talk. I see. You might give your team a pep talk to raise their spirit. All right. One's coming on board. Heroes? What is this? I'm Oh, hirees. Hirees. People you've hired, and they're going to come on board the company. They're going to come on board the staff. And if you're aware of something icy, you are hip to it. In slightly archaic slang, I would say. Oh, here, interesting. Guitar never used $15. It really does look like attaches, doesn't it? Attache cases. And here we we must be basically done with this axe clue. So we have door, oh, doorbuster deal. Oh, it's not attaches, it's attached. I don't know where I was going with that. Attached would be certainly a much more likely word just in general, in almost any context, um, except for some very particular ones. And that suggests to me, guitar never used, $15. The pitch might be no strings attached. Perhaps one reason it's only $15, although the strings are the cheapest part of the guitar, of any guitar generally. So anyway, no strings attached to this guitar. And the prop axe used in The Shining is a door buster deal. So indeed, it does have to do with both busting down the door in The Shining and also the deer deal being a door buster. And no strings attached to this guitar because it's missing its strings and also the deal has no strings attached. It's only $15. So a fruit, fruit detritus could be a, the pit of the fruit. You'd get rid of that. And like a wailing cat, like a wailing cat, don't immediately see it. An after-tax investment account informally. It could. This could be Roth, a Roth IRA. It's a it's a form of IRA, which is an individual retirement account in U.S. personal finance. No real point in explaining the difference between an IRA and a Roth IRA, but it is a kind of kind of tax advantaged account in the United States. All right, and then here we have loosen. Um. Why do I not see what that is? I get really irritated when I have that myself, when I have these four letter, something like this, where half of the letters are already filled in and it's probably something straightforward and I just can't get my brain there. Anyway, a bonobo, e.g., that's an ape, right? Ah, I see. To loosen is to ease, as in restrictions, to loosen restrictions. And then here we have sucker, three words ending in a P, or three letters ending in a P. Could be a sap, could be a sap. And then what is, that gives us an S here, which not a no-no, not a no-no. I wonder if it's CC, yes, yes, in Spanish. I don't know, I'm not confident yet. Let's look at this across. Textbook, a few pages torn out, $2. Amended edition, maybe, to indicate or updated edition or something like that. Oh, I just noticed like a wailing cat is probably in heat. So it wouldn't be amended edition, maybe updated edition. And that updated is better than, than um, updated is better than amended because updated, you could see it being, I suppose part of what's going on with these phrases is that you could sort of consider them to be uh, positive pitches, hence, hence the the theme, garage sale pitches. No strings attached, you're saying. No strings attached. You don't have to do anything to to get this deal. But really, there's a hidden meaning, which is uh, this guitar is, is unstrung. And then similarly, you could say updated edition, and one could reasonably assume that to mean, ah, it's the newest version of the textbook. But actually, what you're saying is there are pages missing. So that might be what is going on. And I see the guitar has been never used, and perhaps that's why it's unstrung. The doorbuster deal. I guess I guess there isn't a consistent sort of positive negative quality to these because there isn't really anything particularly negative about the fact that this axe was used to bust down a door. In fact, that's part of what would make it valuable since it was uh, used to that purpose on a film, a famous film. All right. Anyway, so this could be updated edition. Let's see if that carries through. Strip. Could be to disrobe if it means strip one's clothing, and then not a no-no, right? It's not CC. That that seemed pretty wrong. That seemed pretty implausible. So not a no-no. I'm really 
struggling today with these fairly short and straightforward answers. It's, it's oh, maybe cattle call. Maybe this isn't, maybe it's not updated edition. Some beers, I mean, this could be pilsners. Well, no, but you'd want it to be plural, pilsners, because it says some beers. Otherwise, it might say something like a beer, maybe. I don't know. It could be pilsner, I suppose. Concerns for a homeowner's association. You know, I'm going to remove updated edition. I'm not confident about it. And I'm sorry if you're way ahead of me on this. I suspect plenty of you are. So what do we have here? Super wrong identification. Ah, I, wow, I see. <laughs> and there's a question mark indicating some kind of pun or wordplay. And sometimes that means we have to uh, take one of the words in a different meaning. And sometimes it sort of means in general, we, should, we shouldn't read this with the surface meaning. We should read it in a, in a, in a cutesy or cleverer way. And in this case, I think this is referring to Superman. I think super in this case is short for Superman rather than super wrong, rather than meaning very wrong idiomatically. It means uh, Superman has been incorrectly identified, essentially, is what's going on here. And it's a plane, as stated, I think starting in, the, someone told me this because it came up in the crossword at some point, but I think it was maybe starting in the Superman radio series or something. I don't remember. In any case, it's a bird, it's a plane. No, it's Superman. And plane is the one that fits in here. So I suspect this is, it's a plane. Course standard. Oh, it could be par, it could be a golf course with the number of strokes you are supposed to be able, you know, in which you're supposed to be able to complete the hole. And tours can be found on it. Tours can be found on it. I'm not sure. Netflix crime drama starring Pedro Pascal. I don't know. I probably haven't seen it. Take a pot shot. Could be inhale. I mean, if it's referring to pot marijuana, you know, pot, pot meaning marijuana, it could could say inhale. Could mean inhale. Or rather, or rather. I mean, here we have like the smell of rising dough. Could be yeasty. This doesn't look great, does it? Or rather, with an I Y. The only thing I can think of that would have an I Y would be the would be DIY DIY for a do it yourself sort of project. So I don't. Maybe inhale is wrong. Yeasty seems likely though. Bloodline. Atria or aorta, not a, sorry, atria is a completely different word, but aorta is a major uh, blood vessel going to the heart, right? So take a pot shot. I don't know what that is. I'm sorry. Here we have demolish. Maybe yeasty is incorrect. Catch a glimpse. No, catch a glimpse of could be a spy. A spy to see somebody. To spy them, I guess. Tours can be found on it. The Loire? I don't know. I think I'm having trouble today with these short little words that should be very straightforward. Name for zinc sulfide that is one letter short of a kitchen appliance. I huh. don't know offhand. Goldfinger's first name. I don't remember this. This must be Goldfinger from James Bond from the film Goldfinger. Um, but I don't know. I haven't seen that movie in ages. Hooked. Oh, addicted. Hooked. You're addicted to a substance, for instance. And then heir to the throne as a rule, would be the eldest, generally speaking. So as a rule, meaning most of the time, but not strictly the case. Blank, I'll be fine. I mean, it could be it'll all be fine. It will all be fine. Oh. Name for zinc sulfide that is one letter short of a kitchen appliance. I mean, blender would be one letter too long to fit in this. So... So what, what letter, what letter is left out here to create the name for zinc sulfide? I really don't think I know the name of zinc sulfide. Would it simply be blend, or would it be belader, 
or would it be it wouldn't be blend r that looks like some sort of horrible modern phone app for some unnecessary service so i don't know i don't know i mean oh only's partner could be one one and only the partner of the word one or sorry of the word only could be one so ward workers for short they could be they could be mds i mean they could be rns for registered nurse but i don't think so because we've sort of already used the n from blender if this is indeed blender so it could be MDs, a war, in this case, ward workers, meaning a hospital ward. And then here we have a term of endearment. Well, it could be pet. You could call you could call someone pet as a sort of, uh, you know, exactly as it says, a term of endearment, a, a, a way to show affection. So that would be blend. I hope that's correct. It seems like it must be based on the crosses. Anyway, here's another theme clue we've not yet seen. Two fish tanks, accessories included, five dollars. Two fish tanks, accessories included. I wonder if this this is bottom here. Ice cream container. Yep, yeah, could be tub, tub of ice cream. And then what was this? Have we seen this yet? Oh, Goldfinger's first name. Oh, I wonder if it's Auric, sort of referring to gold. Yeah, that seems pretty likely. So he has a name that itself is sort of pointing towards gold. And then bear could be naked with that A there. And a source. Well, it could be source, meaning a source as a verb or a noun. It's probably more likely to be a noun, but it could be a verb. Like a tautology by its nature. That's funny, given I'd mentioned tautologies earlier in the solve. Um, like a tautology, by its nature. Same? Uh, it doesn't really, doesn't really work. Stick on a table. So here's a question mark, which is our pun or wordplay indicator, and that could a stick of something on a table. So what is there a stick of on a table? A stick of butter? A. I mean, I think the, I think the, you'd ordinarily read this I think, without the question mark, you stick on the table, you put it on the table. And so the question mark is presumably telling us to read it a different way, and probably stick is being used in another way, or it could be that table's being used in another way. I mean, it could be a table of figures, of data, something like that. But I also wonder, sometimes I, sometimes I doubt my own assumption about which is the sort of standard reading and which would be the punny reading. Anyway, I'm going to move on for now. Oh, rock bottom, two fish tanks, accessories included. Rock bottom prices. So rocks at the bottom of the fish tanks, which is why we have accessories included. I wonder why it matters that there are two fish tanks. I sort of thought, I think this was, I made this more complicated in my mind than I needed to because I thought that the fact that there were two of them would matter. I mean, is it that it's prices rather than rock bottom price? Doesn't really seem necessary, does it? Oh, maybe this is the Loire Valley. And then Tor. Is that Tor meaning tower in French? I don't entirely understand what that's referring to. Demolish. Could be raise, but then this would have to be an E here. And that wouldn't work here anyway. It took a pot shot. Feels though I've done something wrong in this area generally. Oh, Netflix crime drama. Narcos, maybe? I haven't seen that, but I think I've heard of that. So demolish. And then here we have or rather. Oh, it could be nay. You could say, ah, the answer to that clue is raise. Nay, it's something else that I can't yet identify. Uh, take a pot shot and... Oh, I see. I was completely on the wrong track. Anti up. I see. I see. And then I see. Demolish route as in you could demolish somebody in a game or a battle. I was thinking of it as demolishing a building, for instance, and I was on the wrong track. So always try and imagine the other senses in which a word could be used. And that certainly applies here to take a pot shot. This refers to the pot, the sort of betting pool in a poker game or something. You could anti up 
uh, to um, take a shot at the pot, I guess. Take take a shot at winning the pot. All right, I think that's what's going on. Let's move on from that area now that I think we've done it. Washington, oh, another Washington neighbor. We had Washington neighbor Idaho, I think, somewhere. This is probably Oregon, the state of Oregon, which also borders the state of Washington in the northwest United States. All right, and then here we have a source... A need? Nah. Stick on it. Oh, I see. Stick on a table a Q. So um, on a pool table, snooker Q or something, that, that sort of thing, the Q stick. And here we have like a tautology by its nature. I see is true. A tautology is something that, uh, you know, is sort of in... <sighs> I'm never good at <laughs> properly explaining these sort of philosophical or, I guess in this case, logical concepts in a way that is the most accurate to the meaning because, um, I don't know, usually someone corrects me. But tautology is something that essentially refers back to itself. So you could say, you know, blue is blue or something like that. Um, it is what it is, I guess, is a sort of idiomatic tautology. And by its nature, it's true because you are referring back to the thing in question. I'm sure there are more interesting tautologies than the ones I said where I was just repeating one word. Anyway, a source, oh, well, could be feed, you could feed something, so, eh, no, that's not right. Why do I not see what this is? Um, it doesn't need, there aren't very many letters that could follow Oh, seed, the source of something, the source of an idea, the seed of an idea. I see. Once again, I wasn't really thinking about this as expansively as I could have. Anyway, some beers. Well, it isn't Pilsner's, that's for sure. Um, and I don't think I know what it is offhand, so I'm going to look elsewhere for now. Not a no-no. <laughs> Back to nothing on that one. Let's look up here. Pam's former partner on The Office. Um, I assume this is The American Office, right? Pam was from The American Office. Uh, I think I remember this. Ron or Rod, those are both, I suppose, possibilities. I don't remember. Brave's opponent in the 2021 World Series. Well, <laughs> this would have been pretty recently, wouldn't it have been? But I don't know, but I would guess it to be Astro because that is a team I've heard of and it would fit. So let's, let's hope that's the case. Huey, Dewey, and Louie, e.g. These are the what, the nephews of Scrooge McDuck, I think, in the Disney cartoons, and they are ducks, they're cousins, brothers. What are they that <laughs> fits in here? I don't know. Uh, predictably, oh, and it's in quote, it's in quotation marks. So this would be, um, this, this means, I think, that what we're going to match it with another spoken phrase. So it could be something like, as I said, or something. Well, that doesn't fit in this case, but you see what I mean. It's, it's rather than being a sort of synonym, we're looking for a comparable phrase, I think. I think. Anyway, let's keep looking around. Split personalities. It could be exes. In other words, two personalities in a split. They could be ex-partners. And here we have a Clockwork Orange narrator. That would be the character Alex from A Clockwork Orange. Uh, the film or book, presumably. In large supply. And then what do we have here? Disperse, right. So it probably doesn't, probably doesn't end with up. Because that would be sort of an odd way to end in large supply. And then what is this? Baseball, oh, have we seen this one yet? Baseball mitt has a small hole, just one dollar. Certainly looks like it ends in thing, doesn't it? And then, yeah, set up could be, oops, set up could be staged. Oh, sandal variety tea strap. That makes much more sense. I was really looking for it to be something trap, but of course it's a tea strap sandal. That, I don't know. Sometimes I wonder, sometimes I wonder about my mind. Word that can come before or after home. Right, I saw this quite early on and didn't really know how to solve it. Well, I not so much that I didn't know how to solve it, I just didn't solve it. <laughs> Word that can, be, can become before or after home.
That is killing me. And then here we have, oh, garb, garb. Thre your threads, your clothing, your garb. There we go. So, home. I mean, it feels like it could be run home or home run, which would make oboe wrong, which wouldn't be in any way surprising. So what would that mean? That looks pretty weird, though, doesn't it? Instrument with a solo in Seal's Kiss from a Rose. Doesn't really look great. So is there another thing that if that were oboe, we could put here? Home row or a row home. I mean, the row home, is that a phrase like a row house, like a terraced house, as you call it here in the UK? Um, maybe. I don't know if that's a phrase or not. That's the problem. So TV volume knob broken, only $10. I don't think we've looked. Oh, that could end with down, as in volume being turned down, right? If that were a W. And then we'd put an O back in here. Ah, and then heaven forbid, God no. That's actually quite well clued. Um, sorry, I just got a notification. Um, because it looks, because it sort of matches heaven and God. They sort of match a, a little bit thematically. And so that's it's, it's tidally clued, I would say. Food Network host Brown. Alton Brown is a television food host, right? And then as well could be two, as in also. And disperse, ah, scatter. That's probably about the most straightforward, <laughs> most straightforward synonym of disperse you could imagine. And it took me quite a while to get there. Anyway, a fiend. And then here we have animated greetings. And here we have, right, TV volume knob broken, only $10. Oh, I wonder if this is that, that down somehow. What do we have here? Oh, yeah, the BFG author. That was Roald Dahl, the children's book author. So that actually would work. And then could we put a T here? U.S. Poet Laureate with a 1987 Pulitzer Prize. Um, I don't know offhand, so I probably shouldn't fill that in just in case. And then here we have, oh, enlarged supply would be galore. So you could say, we've got crossword cells galore on a Sunday. We've got them in large supply. And back, I mean, it could be ago in the sense of three years back, three years ago. And then pinpoint with a question mark. So some kind of pun or wordplay pinpoint. If pin were in capital letters, I could imagine this being referring to an ATM or a cash point, somewhere you would enter your pin, your personal identification number, but it's not. So I don't know why I said all of that. Anyway, uh, baseball mitt has a small hole, just $1. Baseball mitt has a small hole. So how would we turn has a small hole into something that could potentially be seen as a positive pitch. Well, this looks like, oops, this looks like everything, doesn't it? I mean, what else could that be? And then down here, the Poet Laureate again. Q side dish. Oh, it could be a salad. Probably going to kick myself when I see what the answer to this is. Anyway. Oh, pinpoint. I see. Pinpoint lapel. You could pin a pin. You could affix a pin to your lapel on your suit. Okay. Ah, I see. Drop everything. Baseball mitt. Small hole. Just one dollar. You'll drop everything, I suppose, because of the hole in the baseball mitt. Uh, yeah, you'd think that would say a big hole if that were the case. But anyway, drop everything. This incredible deal, only $1. So there, we've solved that. And libertines, so you know, people who are, I suppose, kind of free and open in their, I think often that refers to sort of sexual mores, but it could be presumably other things. Anyway, what is that? Ruse, perhaps? Or R O U E? I don't know. Get off one's high horse. And there's a question mark indicator. So we're not meant to read this the way you ordinarily would, meaning step down from your overly righteous position. Uh, but in this, in this case, literally get off your horse, dismount. Predictably, ah, I see, as usual. And I suppose in this case, as usual and predictably are synonyms even without 
the quote marks, but they are things one would say. They're largely verbal phrases. So as usual, predictably, you could say either of those things in similar contexts. So if something is not even close, it is far. And an incense residue would be ash. If you burn incense, you could be left with ash as the residue. So a model featured on many romance novel covers. Ah, Fabio. I remember Fabio. Big, big model in the 90s, I guess. Oh, I suppose Libertines is Ruse or Rues. I actually don't know if it has a an accent or not. R-O-U-E-S. And then, oh, <laughs> Huey, Dewey, and Louie, none of that information mattered about their uh, their uncle or whether th- how they're related to one another. They're simply rhymes. Huey, Dewey, and Louie are rhymes. And that's why it says E-G. I should have probably paid more attention to that. Huey, Dewey, Lu- and Louie, for instance. It's not necessarily that this the property here is particular to Huey, Dewey, and Louie. It just so happens that they are rhymes. They're an example of rhymes. Wallet in good condition, plenty of card slots, $5. And it starts with buy, which is quite a plausible way to start a pitch, um, but I don't know what else it is, so let's move on. Baseballs, Matty or Felipe? I suspect this is Alu. Oops, that's my guess. Um, I don't know these particular baseball players, but Alu seems to be a family name seems to be a sort of Alu baseball dynasty. So I'm guessing that that's what it is. And I know that mainly from crosswords, but let's look, let's look around and see if we can confirm or deny. Some beers could be ales. Hebrew letter between calf and mem. I don't know, unfortunately. So I wonder if this is by now. It looks plausible, right? What about, oops, oops, what have I done? By now, dismount, astro, and, oh, I didn't ever discern if that was Ron or Rod. Classic mower brand. Well, probably a mower, a lawn mower. Probably starts with lawn. Oh boy, this is this is tough. Now we've got a brand, a proper noun, crossing with another proper noun. It could be lawn god. I mean, I don't I don't know this mower brand. I don't really know any mower brands. I guess I do. John Deere is a mower brand. Anyway, um, what else do we have? Ready for a refill. It could be empty. Straightforward. And then we have concerns for a homeowners association. Don't know offhand, so let's look elsewhere. Nautilus's locale. Well, the sea, the sea creature, right? So, or I suppose the Nautilus, the fictional submarine, Captain Nemo's submarine. Either way, it's in the sea. And I still don't know this Hebrew letter, unfortunately. So, oh, I see. Ah, clever. Okay. Buy now, pay later is the uh, pitch. And here we have extremely energetic people. Boy, this is about the third time in the last few weeks, I think, at least this has come up in the in the crossword. Or maybe, or maybe it's not. I, I thought it was maybe going to be type A's, but maybe it's not. That doesn't quite fit. Hype men? Could be hype man, a hype man in a sort of, I don't know, a rap battle or something. Um, this is a case where I would almost expect it to have the EG, the um, if it were hype man, because a hype man isn't like definitionally an extremely energetic person. So I, you know what? I think I'm not confident enough about that to put it in, so I'm not going to. All right. What about this? We don't know. Here we have textbook a few pages turned out. Let's let's try up. Was there a reason it wasn't updated edition? I can't remember if we determined that for some reason or another. So let's try it out. Some beers. Paddle call. I don't know. It could be a moo or a low. Yeah, I'm not really crazy about it. Um It's good in a saying. Nothing? It's good for nothing? Least enjoyable parts. Uh, low moments. So, uh, maybe not. That's a shame. Yeah, it probably isn't moments because that you can't really fit anything useful there. Okay, well. Oh, well. I'm sort of running out of steam, aren't I? Let's see. Where else can we look? Words that might elicit the response, prove it. And a final check, final check, question mark. So some sort of pun or indicator. 
pun or wordplay, I should say, started a turn, perhaps. I don't know, slowed. It says perhaps, so it's not necessarily... It could be a turn in a game. Rolled a die or drew a card. It could be drew. Website with star ratings. There are lots of websites with star ratings, aren't there? I mean, that's sort of standard these days. Um, blank Mia, Italian tor- term of endearment. Ah, uh, Caro Mia, or Cara Mia, I guess, depending on whether it's masculine or feminine. My grandmother used to say this to me. Um, so you'd think I would know how to infer whether it's masculine or feminine from the Mia. I mean, Mia would be feminine, but I don't know if that's because that refers to the person speaking or to the target of their affection. So I don't actually know how to fill this in, which is sort of embarrassing. Anyway, ingots. um, uh, Oh, I see. Words that might elicit the response prove it could be I can so. And a website with star ratings. Oh, IMDb, the Internet Movie Database. Oh, and ingots are bars, as in gold bars. So Cara Mia. That's what I would have guessed based on the Mia, but I wasn't very confident. All right. Anyway, final check. Ah, it's mate in in chess. A checkmate is the final check. You can put the opponent's king in check, but then the mate is permanent check. All right. It's good in a saying. Oh, no news is good news, I think they say. Oh, low, it's not low moments, it's low points, least enjoyable part. Ah, boy. All right, it should have been, should have been easier than it was. Anyway, this isn't hype. Extremely energetic people is not hype, man. And I thought that was probably pretty implausible. Some beers, oh, they could be imports, I suppose, imported beers. And a cattle call could be a moo. Oh, I see. Textbook, a few pages torn out, $2. A limited edition. I was sort of on the right track, but I didn't try enough possible options. Oh, so maybe not a no-no is CC after all of that. And it probably is because extremely energetic people is plural, so it'll end with an S. And then dynamos. You could refer to somebody as a dynamo. That person has lots of energy. And concerns for a homeowner's association, I see. They would be the bylaws of the association. I suppose you could, wouldn't even have to be a homeowner's association. Many associations are concerned with their own bylaws. And then here we have Lawn Mower Brand. Lawn Boy? That would make Roy, which I didn't even consider. I thought, what, Ron and Rod? I didn't even think about Roy, another men's na- man's name. It seems much more likely than Lawn Bon or Lawn Bod, which I guess you could show off your bod on the lawn, but you probably wouldn't name a mower that. So probably Lawn boy, which would make Roy Pam's former partner. Okay. Now we've got to solve this upper corner. Oh, and I don't think I ever saw this clue. Blank, but a scratch. Monty Python, tis, but a scratch. Uh, So sayest the Black Knight in Monty Python and the Holy Grail. Me too. Could be so am I or so do I, but I'm not really sure how to know which without some crosses. So let's put that in for now. It gets the lead out. I don't know. I don't know what gets the lead out. Is it some sort of compound or something? Um, here we have a fiend, I don't know, a maniac or something. With that AC at the end, you could say that person's a real fiend, that person's a real maniac. I don't necessarily think of those things as being synonyms, but that AC is quite a limitation, isn't it? So let's look here. Outback side. Oh, maybe it is an emu. That was one of my first, uh, was in fact my first guess. A stingray or barracuda EG. Now without this B in barracuda being capitalized, this would look like a sea creature. But with it capitalized, I suspect it's, um, I suspect these are brand names. These are, I think both cars. So maybe a car. And because it says stingray or barracuda EG, for example, we're looking for it's a singular clue because that's an or, not an and. If it said stingray and barracuda, e.g., the answer would be cars. But because it's or, we're only referring to one or the other. Anyway, animated greetings. I see what this is. It's an E word. One of my, one of my hated E words. I thought animated greetings, and I'm sure this is what I was intended to think. I'm sure this was an intent, intentional um, misdirection. I was thinking animated greetings, jumping up and down, saying hello. No, it means animated in the sense of uh, 
illustration animation, uh, you know, uh, figures moving on a screen. So E cards, which can have an animation. Oh, I suppose I don't know this poet laureate, or if I do, I don't, I don't remember, presumably her name, Rita Dove, perhaps. Turn, I see, turn that down. Don't turn that down. There we go. That's our, that's our TV with the broken, <laughs> broken uh, volume knob. Don't turn that down. Don't turn this deal down. Only $10, but also don't turn down that TV because the volume knob is broken. So there we go. That doesn't help with so do I or so am I, but it does give us some other um, vertical crosses. Um, ah, that doesn't look very useful. I wonder if these are wrong. Don't turn that down. Could be won't turn that down, but this OO is not looking great. I suppose me too could be as am I or as do I. It doesn't have to be so. And this could be don't turn that down, won't turn that down, can't turn that down. They at least both end with NT. A good dessert to split. Well, it's not it's not a banana split, but it could be a Sunday. Is a Sunday a I don't really know what determine what defines is a Sunday and a split are those synonyms? I don't even know, but it, this does look plausible. What about this me too? Right. Okay, so it could be so or as do I. And then here we have, having made up one's mind about, could be set on. I am not set on whether this is as or so do I. I have not yet made my mind up about it. What was this thing? Oh, barbecue side dish, right? We never actually looked into this any further. It could be with these letters, it could be a, I don't know, is a bean salad? Is that something you'd serve at a barbecue? I'm not really sure. Maybe. And it gets the lead out. With this E here, it probably ends in. Well, not probably, but it could end in an R if it's something that does something. Oh, and before, oh, I never looked at this. Boy, some of these would have been easy fills if I'd seen them earlier, like that tis and this before, once, air, an, an archaic way of saying before, but also used in poetry still. All right. So, oh, I didn't look at this either. Boy, I missed all kinds of gimmies early on. Motley blank, Motley crew, and there's a, it's especially obvious because if you're if you're well, you don't need to be familiar with the band, but if you're even aware that there is a band named Motley Crew with this sort of umlaut character over the O, um, that would be quite a hint. Don't remember this acting FBI director's name at all. I don't remember. And then here it gets the, oh, an eraser gets the lead out, pencil lead. And that makes as do I. And then that makes this can't turn that down. Oh, McCabe probably. And then evidence of disorderly conduct is a mess. So pretty straightforward. Does that, there it is. Boy, that was long, wasn't it? A big, long solve. We, 53 minutes and we're almost at an hour on the total video. So I'll wrap this up quickly so everybody can get on with their days. Uh, with their day, I should say. So I suppose it is one day that we're all sharing together. Um, so there we go. That was the Sunday crossword, a fun collection of punny garage sale pitches. Can't turn that down about the TV with the vo broken volume knob for only $10. Drop everything to buy this baseball mitt with a small hole for $1. $1. There are no strings attached to this guitar, never used, $15. This textbook with a few pages torn out is a limited edition, $2. These two fish tanks with accessories included are at rock bottom prices of $5. And this wallet in good condition with plenty of card slots, you should buy now, pay later, $5. And finally, I think this is all of them, the prop axe used in The Shining, a valuable collector's item, the door buster deal of two hundred dollars. So a nice, uh, a nice, fun, silly collection of garage shell pictures constructed by Jeff Kramer, or Creamer, edited as always by Will Schwartz. I forget if I said that earlier. Actually, maybe I didn't. I have no memory of saying it. Uh, in any case, now I have <laughs> one way or the other. I've said it once or twice. And I hope you enjoyed this puzzle. I hope you enjoyed the puzzle, and I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, boy, these are long, these Sunday puzzles. Um, and because they're so long, there's such a, there's, a, I think, a high, uh, high spread, 
high gamut of difficulty throughout. So do let me know how you fared with this puzzle, whether you found it easy for a Sunday, difficult for a Sunday. I'm always curious to know. Um, I feel as though it's it's difficult to calibrate, to get one sense of how difficult a puzzle is in some objective sense, because it's also so tuned to one's own, I don't know, knowledge and instincts, I suppose. So do let me know. I'm always curious, especially on these big, long Sundays. And if you liked this, please do subscribe to the channel. I'm trying to inch towards uh, 4,000 subscribers, getting there. I think I'm 40 or 50 away, something like that. And uh, there's nothing particularly important about that number. I just think it would be nice to hit. It's a big round number. Uh, and if you know someone who might enjoy this, please do pass it along, either directly to a friend or through your online community of choice. Pass it on over there. And if you particularly would like to help support this series, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, please do consider heading over to the Patreon campaign and seeing if you'd like to contribute on a monthly basis of a few pounds a month or the equivalent in your local currency to access a wealth of bonus solves, an extra channel on the Discord chat server for the daily solve, and depending on the level at which you contribute, possibly also an exclusive Let's Check the Crosses mug and credit at the end of these videos. And to that end, today, I would like to very much personally thank Skella Chicken, Domo Cute, Gabe Chinkupalmi, and as always, the inestimable Hood Monster. So thank you, Skella Chicken. Thank you, Domo Cute. Thank you, Gabe. And thank you, Hood Monster, for your generous recurring support, helping make this series a sustainable enterprise. I very much appreciate it. And with that, Thank you for watching the video, and thanks to everybody else who is back to the Patreon campaign. And I will call it a day. I hope you have an excellent remainder of your Sunday, and I hope you join me tomorrow for a much shorter, much easier puzzle, the Monday puzzle, the first of the crossword-solving week. So with that, I'll see you then. Take care. Mm -hmm.